اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونستهدي ونعوذ بالله من شرور انفسنا ومن سيئات اعمالنا من يهد الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له واشهد ان لا اله الا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد ان محمدا عبده ورسوله اكرمه بنبوته وجعله رحمه للعالمين وصلى الله على محمد واله الطاهرين الذين اذهب الله عنهم الرجس وطهرهم تطهيرا رب اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي امري واحلل عقده من لساني يفقهوا قولي عباد الله اوصيكم واوصي نفسي بتقوى الله I advise myself and advise all my brothers and sisters to hold on to taqwa because it is taqwa that is a right that Allah has over us and it is taqwa through taqwa that we have any right over Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala we should therefore seek the help of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guard us in observing taqwa and seek the help of taqwa in fulfilling our duties to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for indeed today taqwa is a shield and a protection and fi ghadin and, and, and on tomorrow it is a path to paradise amma ba'd assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh various shia parties in pakistan have announced that they are going to observe yawm azamat nawas rasul alayhi salam today friday and stage a rally on sunday to pro- protest against the burning of mosques imam bargahs shops and houses of shia muslims in pakistan you may all have heard that this has unfortunately happened in uh, pakistan and the situation is really really bad and all the ulama from both the sides and sunni and shias are trying to bring both the feuds together and and uh, ensure that there is peace in this country shall we hope to allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to restore peace that they used to enjoy at one time and remove this sectarian tension and strife pakistan's top female shia scholar khanam sayyida tayyiba bukhari and head of bukhari relief foundation has narrowly escaped being a target of shia genocide in multan on wednesday thousands of turkish shia is gathered in halkali square in turkey last weekend chanting slogans against united states and israel and vying vying to defend sayyida zainab shrine an egyptian top shiite figure said al hashimi has criticized the egyptian government for not giving the shiites any representation in the 50 member committee to amend the 2012 constitution inna allaha wa malaikatahu yusalluna 'ala an-nabi ya ayyuhalladhina amanu sallu 'alayhi wa sallimu taslima Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in surah Ali Imran kullu nafsin dha'iqatul maut wa innama tuwaffawna ujurakum yawm al-qiyamah faman zuhziha 'anil nari wa udkhila al-janna faqad faz wa mal hayatu ad-dunya illa mata'ul ghurur kullu nafsin dha'iqatul maut every soul shall test death wa innama tuwaffawna ujurakum and you will be granted you will be given your full reward for all the good deeds that you have done in this world yawm al qiyamah on the day of resurrection faman zuhziha 'anil nari those people who have been spared of the fire who have been drawn away from the fire wa udkhila al-jannah and have been admitted into jannah 
فقد فاز these are the people who are successful وما الحياة وما الحياة الدنيا إلا متاع الغرور what is this dunya this world except متاع الغرور the enjoyment which is deceptive which is illusory not a real enjoyment when we all well know that death is bound to come we cannot escape from it whether we are young or old and in whatever circumstances we may be and that the only ever living is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it is enough this death remembrance of death is enough to make us be in a state of preparation all the time for what for that day of reckoning how do we prepare by filling our life with good deeds and what is the life of this world is except the illusory enjoyment so we fill our life with good deeds and we refrain from those deeds which invite the wrath of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his will to imam hasan alayhi salam which appears as letter number 31 in nahjul balagha imam ali alayhi salam said i'lam ya bunayya annaka inma khuliqta lil akhirati la lid dunya no my son that you have been created for the next world not for this world walil fanai la lil baqa and for annihilation you are not going to live in this world you're going to perish but this is dunya this uh, life is for libaqa for the remaining life which you are going to endure will going to last forever on yawm al qiyamah wa lil mawt la lil hayat you have been created for death and not for living what guarantee do we have that we are really going to live today go and visit the graveyards and see how many of our relatives and our acquaintances whom we used to know and whom we used to love have passed away in surah al-nahl allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says ma indakum yanfadu wa ma indallahi baqin whatever is with you will perish but whatever is with allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that is our good actions that is what is going to remain behind that is something that we are going to take with us on the yawm al-qiyamah wa la najziyanna alladhina sabaru ajrahum bi ahsani ma kanu ya'malun indeed we shall give reward to those who are patient according to the best deed that they did in this world and in sermon number 238 in nahj al-balagha imam ali alayhi salam The Imam cautions us, warns us that we should collect provision for the next world by performing good deeds before our death. He says, "Fa'lamu, fa'malu." I beg your pardon. Fa'malu wa antum fi nafs al-baqa. Perform good deeds while you are still alive. Was suhufu manshura while the books, the record is still open. The books or record are still open. for recording what we do what we don't do wal musi yurja while the sinner still has some hope he has some opportunity qabla an yahmud al amal before the light of the action is extinguished once we close our eyes and we are dead finished so we must take that chance that opportunity while we are still alive to perform good deeds yanqati al mahal and before the time expires وتنقضي المدة and our life ends وتسد أبواب التوبة and before the door of توبة is closed death is just a transfer from one home to another on the day of Ashura Imam Hussein alayhi salam said to his companions he said to his companions death is nothing but a bridge over which you pass from this world of difficulties and distress towards this towards that eternal bliss towards that heaven of eternal happiness who amongst you that's what imam saint tells to his companion who amongst you does not like to migrate from the worldly prison to the heavenly place because for a moment this dunya dunya is sijn is a prison 
And as for your enemies, it is like migrating from this palace to the prison. If there is anything, if there is anything that kills our unlawful desires of our soul, it is nothing but remembrance of death. By constantly remembering death, we are actually plucking out the roots of our negligence and preparing ourselves for the appointment with Allah. And that is only accomplished if we remember death constantly. When you frequently remember death, your preoccupation with this fleeting world will diminish and the fire of greed will be extinguished. According to Mullah Mahsin Faith Kashani, the Prophet is saying an hour's contemplation is better than a year's worship. It is all very much about the remembrance of death. According to the famous uh, scholar Ayatollah Mullah Mahsin Faith Kashani. When a person contemplates about death, his exaggerated view of this world is dissolved. And he, then he strives harder to meet his Lord. He strives harder for the hereafter. The believers are those who remember death most and are most prepared for it. For the Prophet wasallam said, He said, Akthiru min dhikri hadi milladdat. Increase the dhikr, the remembrance for the demolisher of desires. So he was asked, what is hadi milladdat? What is this demolisher of desires? And he said, al maut, death. So one way of reviving the remembrance of, uh, remembrance of death in our hearts is to visit graveyards and to attend the sick. There are now three categories of people. People fall under three categories as far as the remembrance of death is concerned. The first group of people are those who are possessed by the glitter, by the glory, by the comforts and of this world, whose deeds are not that good at all. These are the ones who take death very lightly, as if they are exempted from death. They are the ones about whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Surah Al-Jum'ah, قُلْ إِنَّ الْمَوْتَ الَّذِي تَفِرُّونَ مِنْهُ فَإِنَّهُ مُلَاقِيكُمْ Say, indeed, the death that you flee from is going to meet you, is going to overtake you. So when our time comes to leave this temporal world, we cannot defer it by a single hour, not advance it. فَإِذَا جَاءَ أَجَلُهُمْ لا يستأخرون ساعة ولا يستقدمون. You will not able to advance it. Nor will you able to deliver, uh, to defer it. The second group of people are those who repent and remember death abundantly to instill fear and awe in their hearts. These are the people who are always afraid that death might seize them before they have made the necessary preparations. They do not actually detest death. They do not dislike death. Or they do not dislike meeting Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Rather, they fear that they have lost the opportunity to meet Him. Why? Due to their failures and shortcomings and not doing tawbah in this world. Whereas the third group of people are those who are not afraid of death. Rather, they remember death continuously. For what is their utmost desire, what they really desire most, and what they really wish is their appointment with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They want to meet their beloved. For the lover always desires to meet his beloved. This group, they always pray to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma, O oh Allah. أحيني كما كانت الحياة خيرا لي. Keep me alive as long as my life in this world is خير for me. وتوفني and take me إذا كانت الوفاة خيرا لي. And take me away when death is better than than me for me. Yet higher 
than this third group, higher than these three groups, are those who entrust their entire affair to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They love best what Allah loves best. They, their love and their devotion to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it brings them to the level of satisfaction with the divine. They are the example of mutu qabla anta mutu, die before you die. This is the example of those people. In Nahlis al-Qudsi, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ajibtu liman ayqana bil mawti kayfa yafrahu. I wonder how a person can be so happy and just doesn't care at all when he's certain of death. وَعَجِبْتُ لِمَنْ أَيْقَنَ بِالْحِسَابِ كَيْفَ يَجْمَعُ الْمَالِ I wonder at a person, how a person who is certain of hisab, of the day of reckoning, but he still is busy accumulating wealth. وَعَجِبْتُ لِمَنْ أَيْقَنَ بِالْقَبْرِ كَيْفَ يَضْحَكُ I wonder at a person who is certain of going into the grave, and he still do, does maskhara, baha, jokes, and just passes his time in vain discourse. وَعَجِبْتُ لِمَنْ أَيْقَنَ بِبَقَاءِ الْآخِرَةِ وَنَعِيمِهَا كَيْفَ يَسْتَرِيحُ I wonder at a person who is certain of the hereafter. He is certain of the bounties of the hereafter, but he still rests. He is completely indifferent. He doesn't care anything. وَعَجِبْتُ لِمَنْ هُوَ مُطَهِّرٌ بِالْمَاءِ وَغَيْرُ طَاهِرٍ بِالْقَلْبِ I wonder at a person who cleans himself with water, but he does not cleanse his heart. وَعَجِبْتُ لِمَنْ يَعْلَمُ أَنَّ اللَّهَ تَعَالَى مُطَّلِعٌ I wonder, مُطَّلِعٌ عَلَيْهِ كَيْفَ يَعْصِيهِ I wonder at a person. Who knows that Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is aware of what His deeds are, but He still commits sins. وَعَجِبْتُ وَعَجِبْتُ لِمَنْ يَعْلَمُ أَنَّهُ يَمُوتُ وَحْدَهُ وَيَدْخُلُ الْقَبْرَ وَحْدَهُ وَيُحَاسِبُ وَحْدَهُ كَيْفَ يَسْتَأْنِسُ بِالنَّاسِ I wonder at a person who knows that he or she will die alone, go into the grave alone, give accounts alone, but is still engrossed with people joking who will not be able to help him or her. The period before death, the time before death is called ihtidar. And the person who is on his deathbed is referred to as muhtadir. Muhtadir. It is recommended to help the dying person recite La ilaha illallah. For Imam Ja'far al-Sadiq alayhi salam says, <laughs> says, Whoever recites La ilaha illallah during this moment, dying moment, will go to Jannah. So on our lips, the best dhikr, all the dhikr are good, but the best dhikr, which all the orafa recommend is La ilaha illallah. Tuflih. Isn't it? Is it will be successful. La ilaha illallah. It is also recommended to help the dying person recite and understand the kalima and the names of the twelve imams. It is also mustahab to recite before the dying person Surah to Yasin, Surah to Safat, which comes immediately after Surah Yasin. Ayatul Kursi and the 54th ayah of Surah Al-Araf which says Inna Rabbakum Allahu Alladhi Khalaq As-Samawati Wal-Ard and ends with Tabarak Allahu Rabbul Alameen and the last three ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah which starts, which starts with Lillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fi al-ard وَإِن تُبْدُوا مَا فِي أَنفُسِكُمْ أَوْ تُبْدُوهُ لِيُحَاسِبْكُمْ بِهِ اللَّهِ And ends with أَنْتَ مَوْلَانَ فَانْصُرْنَا عَلَى الْقَوْمِ الْكَافِرِينَ It is also highly recommended to recite audibly so that the mayyad can actually listen to it properly, not fast. 
as many times as possible do I adila near the dying person during the time of ihtibar if the dying person is not able to recite it for it contains the fundamentals of Islam lastly do help the dying person to recite the following dua dua of forgiveness and also familiarize yourself with these recitations during your lifetime what is this dua this is the dua of forgiveness allahumma ighfir li al kathir min ma'asik oh allah forgive me for the many sins that i have committed against you waqbal minni al yasir min ta'atik and accept from me the little good deeds that i have done in your obedience يا من يقبل اليسير ويعفو عن الكثير او هي هو اكسبت ذا فيو جود ديدز اند فورجيفز ذا ماني سينز اقبل من اليسير اكسبت فروم مي ذا فيو جود ديدز واعفو عن الكثير اند فورجيف مي ماي ماني سينز انك انت الغفور شولي يو ار ذا فورجيفر اللهم ارحمني فإنك رحيم او الله هاف ميرسي اون مي فور يو ار فور ايفر ميرسيفول وي سيك فورجيفنس اوف الله سبحانه وتعالى وي براي تو الله سبحانه وتعالى ذات ات ذا تايم اوف ديث وي داي وذ اعمال صالحه واخر دعوانا ان الحمد لله رب العالمين بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم ان احسن الحديث ابلغ الموعظه كتاب الله اعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل هو الله احد الله الصمد لم يلد ولم يولد ولم يكن له كفوا احد أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الذي لا اله الا هو الحليم الكريم غافر الذنب وقابل التوب وهو الغفور الرحيم سبحان من سبقت رحمته غضبه وبسط اليدين بالرحمه سبحان من لم يكلف نفسا الا دون وسعها وعفا عن السيئات ولم يجاز بها سبحان من لا يزداد على معاصي العباد الا كرما وجودا وعلى كثره الذنوب الا عفوا وصفحا نشهد ان لا اله الا هو العطوف على العباد بجوده والعواد والاغواد على المذنبين بحلمه ونشهد ان محمدا نبيه وحبيبه سيد المرسلين وشفيع المذنبين بعثه رحمة للعالمين صلى الله عليه واله الداعين الى سبيل الله بالحكمة والموعظة الحسنة قادة الامم واولياء النعم ومعدن الرحمة اللهم صل على سيد المرسلين وشفيع المذنبين نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه واله وعلى امام المسلمين وقائد الغر المحجلين امير المؤمنين علي بن ابي طالب صلوات الله عليه واله وعلى سيدتي نساء العالمين وبضعه خاتم النبيين سيدتنا فاطمه بنت رسول الله صلوات الله عليها وعلى الحسن المجتبى والحسين الشهيد بكربلاء وعلي بن الحسين ومحمد بن علي وجعفر بن محمد وموسى بن جعفر وعلي بن موسى ومحمد بن علي وعلي بن محمد والحسن بن علي عليهم الصلاه والسلام 
اللهم صل على مولانا صاحب الزمان ما حيا ثار البدع والطغيان هادم ابنية الشرك والنفاق حاصل فروع المغي والشقاق صلوات الله وسلامه عليه وعلى آبائه الكرام ما اتصلت الليالي والأيام اللهم عجل فرجه وسهل مخرجه وكل ناظرنا بنظرة منا إليه وجعلنا من المستشهدين بين يديه وتفضل على أمرائنا المؤمنين بمزيد التوفيقات وازدياد الإقبال وعلو الدرجات اللهم افعل بنا ما أنت أهله ولا تفعل بنا ما نحن أهله بجاه محمد وآله المعصومين سوات الله عليهم أجمعين اللهم اجعلنا ممن يذكر فتنفعه الذكرى إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان ويتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون الله 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 الله